Hello, it's me, and we're traveling through our Lucky Charms um, collection here with our pink hearts. As you recall, we've got pink hearts, yellow stars, blue moons, purple horseshoes, and all the other various um, Lucky Charms that exist out there. Anyway, uh, we're going to tackle our way through this pink heart. Um, basically, it's really the same kind of concept. This is a 3x3 three three modification. Um, and because of that, it is a shapeshifter. And as we study the conformation, the configuration of this, we see that we've got two edges that look the same and two other edges that look the same, but it's actually not just two. We've got four edges that look the same. And because of that, we could potentially falsely equivocate these. And uh, if we do that, we thus get ourselves some parity. In other words, if I put this over here, it might fit, but it might not be what the puzzle actually wants in terms of edges. For corners, these two corners uh, aren't exactly the same. One belongs in one place, the other belongs in another. But they look a little, they look the same, although you can't confuse these two, but you might confuse them with these two. What's more, one of our edges also has a symmetric shape, so the rotation could cause parity. For further description of what I'm talking about, go ahead and take a look at this tutorial, because I kind of went through all those concepts here. Um, but there's another added issue with this. Both of these corners, I could tell... Uh, corners? No. Both of these edges, I can tell where they're, they're supposed to be because of how they lined up with the centers here. When you look at the centers here, so this is obviously a center. If I move this here, this is a center. It's a little easier to see which ones are centers. But uh, these two actually, because of the sloping shape of this, don't line up with these with the center exactly the same. So I'm going to show you what I mean by that. So we'll go ahead and see if we can use our special parity recognition skills with these Lucky Charms in order to navigate our way through it. And the fact that it's one color actually makes it a little more difficult because it's a little bit less of a guidepost. So let's see if we can apply our concepts to this particular puzzle. And Abraga to Hocus Pocus. Okay, so here we have a broken heart. So let's see if we can mend this broken heart, fix it all up, and forge a heart shape out of this glob of corpuscles here. Okay, so um, this is a top center, this is a bottom center, these are side centers here. So let's start off with the top and the bottom center. Um, now we have to be a little more careful with this because notice the sloping of the center here. That's going to be important in terms of lining these up. So we may think this edge belongs here, but I'm not so sure. It kind of looks a little ugly over there. But if I were to put it over here, it looks like it belongs with the center, but I'm not so sure that it belongs with, with this, which means that this might have to be turned. Here's what I mean by that. If I turn this out of the way, move my center, turn it back, that looks a little better, but not so much. I still see a cleft here. So I'm going to turn it down, Move it again, and turn it back. And this looks a little bit better. I know it's kind of hard to see, but there isn't much of a cleft here, which means that there is a little bit of a sloping to this to the center. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to assume that this is right. Just in case I might be off by that, let me turn it again. Turn, turn, and oh, even better. It's like a lock and key over here, so that's, that's appropriate over there. So we've got to be careful that we don't... Um, have this rotated wrong. Again, if this were colored or had some sort of pattern on it that I can latch on to, I'd be able to tell, but I have to do it based on palpation, based on just feeling this and seeing if it's correct or not. So I like how this is lined up. This one is going to take a small center, a small edge like this one here. So we're going to work on our cross, so to speak. And I'm going to just find one of these smaller ones. Move this up. And obviously this doesn't belong here. Now this looks like this belongs over here, so let's move this up as well. So this is just standard Rubik's Cube cross-getting strategy, and this fits pretty snug here, so I'm kind of liking how this looks. This has been oriented right. I need another small one over here, so let's just find any old one. Uh, here's one down here that I can maybe use. Turn, turn, and double turn. Uh, do we like that? Yeah, we like that. Do you like that? Yes. She likes it. Okay. Well, she likes it. I like it. So now we're going to move on to the next, uh, another long one here. Now, again, I'm kind of throwing caution to the wind to see if this actually belongs down here or not. So let me see. 
move this up here. Obviously this is rotated wrong, so I'm going to turn it like so. Move it like thus. Turn it like hither. And bring this back up before anybody gets hurt. Okay, so this looks like a good cross and I can tell that it's, uh, that everything is in. Ah, lucky charms. Reminds me of when I was a kid. Alright, so moving on, we're going to want to get our corners in. So this one obviously takes, um, well, it's not so obvious, but yeah, this one takes one of those small shapes like this. Now is when a colored side would have been helpful, but I don't have that, so I'm not sure which one is supposed to be in there. So I'm just going to make a guess at this point, because the very definition of parity is I have no way of knowing. What's supposed to be where? Okay, so this is a corner that I'm going to put into here. You can see this is the bottom end of the heart. So now I'm going to... Hey! hey, hey. Ah, stealing my marshmallows. Uh, that's the best part, you know. Now the one that goes over here is going to be is going to be a shape like this. So it could be any one of these, possibly this one, but the way that it's fitting down here means it probably doesn't fit up over here. So is there another one down here I can pilfer? Yeah, maybe this one here. And turn, 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 turn. Okay, so we're doing well. Now we put the other one in. Simple stuff, fairly simple stuff. That's good over there. Now the one that kind of has the wavy look to it, which is right over here. And again, the whole purpose of this is to practice our parity strategies. Uh, I gotta say, the movement of this puzzle is really, really very good. Okay, so here's the top part of our heart. We like the way that these are evened up, matched up, so that's pretty good. So anyway, moving on to our edges only layer. This is the one that's easiest to recognize, which is this guy over here. So we're gonna roll this in here. Now what's the proper direction? We don't know. That's part of the mystery and the misery. So I'm using Rubik's Cube strategy to roll this in. You can see the yellow star. Um, tutorial to describe those algorithms, but it's straight Rubik's Cube stuff. So what goes in here? Well, probably one of these guys. And if I'm unsure, I can just roll it down to see which one, well, no, these are corners. So it looks like probably this guy here. Yeah, this lines up pretty well. So turn, turn. Turn, and down. So that's good, I like it. One more to go and then we can decide if we indeed have parity. Move this down here, pretty good over here. Turn, 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 turn and down. Okay, so we have our middle layer and now we just have the last layer. Time for a celebration. All right, thank you. So, now we do this. Now bear in mind, even though this looks like it's a symmetric shape, it's not completely symmetric because you can see a slope here. So now we're just going to try to get um, we're going to try to get our edges. Now in this particular puzzle or in this particular scenario, I don't have parity, which means I just so happen to have this rolled in the right direction. And in case you missed this tutorial and you're struggling with this puzzle, here's what might happen if this happened to be rotated wrong. So here's what might have easily happen. We get to the stage and we have to do this and we see uh oh three are up and one is down. So if I were to go like uh, just randomly F R U R I U I F I then you can see a little more clear what I'm talking about. This is up and these three are down. Don't panic when you see that. It appears to be a parity and that means that because it's an edge parity we messed up on an edge somewhere and it's going to be this one because it's symmetric. This got turned upside down. We went over this with a case cube, with this. We're all old hands at this now. So let's go ahead and just take this out and turn this upside down. And it will fix itself. So I'm going to put this back in. And we can have faith in the process of parity and false equivocation and all that good stuff. So once I do that, bang, I have my line over here. So fear not should that happen. Once I do that, I do my F R U R I U I F I, and that gets my cross over here. But bear in mind, I have to line it up with this. 
So what's the best way of doing that? Well, it's hard for me to see exactly where this is supposed to go, only because I don't have a color scheme to help me out here, and I, I can't line it up with this because it's hard to say. Now when I first bought this puzzle, there was writing that was over here, and writing that was over here, so I could line it up with that, but the writing came off. So I actually don't have a way of doing that. I'm just gonna have to use these guys to figure it out. Now is this where it needs to be? Well, this one obviously isn't. This one, uh, it might be, but I'm not so sure. This one obviously isn't either. Um, so I'm going to assume that maybe this is in. This is where it needs to be, and I like where it is with this center over here. So I'm going to pretend like this is where it needs to be and do my rotational middle algorithm that rotates everything around. Knowing this is not right, this has to be here, this has to be here, and this has to be... Actually, this has to be here, this has to be here, this has to be here. So to do that, I hold it over here. This will stay constant. R, U, R, I, U, R. Pretty slippery, huh? That's what happens when you eat too many marshmallows. To U, R, I. Okay, do we like this? Is it lined up? This is good. This is pretty good, this is good, and this is good. So basically we did it. Now bear in mind, when you solve this puzzle, you may find a situation where it looks like everything is right, but this is rotated wrong. What does that look like? Well, it looks a little like this. Okay, now this might seem to be in, but when you really look at it, see how this has a cleft over here, so does this. None of these actually appear to be where they're supposed to be. If this actually had a picture on it to show you where it's supposed to be, you'll see that this is rotated wrong. So don't be fooled by that. Now you might not ever pick that up and it might not come out as parity, but the fact of the matter is this is not the correct solved state. So if you see this, what you want to do is assume that this is rotated wrong. And I don't know where it's supposed to be rotated with this because I don't have a point of reference between here and here. So all I can do is hold it here and rotate things around until I think that I have everything in. So I'm just going to do that again. R U R I U R to U R I. Um, so does anything look like it makes sense? Still nothing. R U R I U R to U R I. R two D two. That's right. Very clever. Isn't she clever? So. We got this, this looks pretty good. And this just goes to show just because we solved this, we found something new with this. So don't write off any puzzles until you've really given it a chance. Now does it go here? Does it go here? Well again, that's another kind of a mystery, I suppose. I'm gonna say it goes over here. Well, actually I'm, I'm gonna say it's not gonna go over there and here's why. If I'm gonna say that this is in, and I think it is, then this necessarily must be also right. But when I look at it, it doesn't look right. See that cleft over there? Maybe you can't see it. Well, this is obviously wrong, but this isn't right over here. Which means I think it's supposed to go here because I don't think this is supposed to be here. I think this is supposed to be anywhere but here, perhaps here. R, U, R, I, U, R, T, oop, U, R, I. So that's here. I'm gonna keep doing that until this ends up over here. R, U, R, I, U, R, to U, Ri. See how much better that looks? Now this fits over here and this fits over here. And that's what I really like about this puzzle is to have to sort of think logically and use kind of deductive reasoning to reason out what needs to go where. It's kind of fun that way. But this looks good and this looks good. So now I'm satisfied with all with where these all are. So kind of be wary of that with this particular puzzle. Okay, now corners. And this is this is kind of hard to intuitively see, but we see that this is out which means this is out, so these two are out because they're supposed to be opposite. What about these two? Well, I don't know if I have parity yet because if these two are out, then we probably don't have parity. If these two are in, then we do have parity. So how can I tell? Well, let's compare this to this. Is this equivalent to this? Because if it is, then it's out. So if this is equivalent to this, it's not supposed to be here, it's supposed to be here. Which means if this is equivalent to this and it's here, that means it's out. If this is not equivalent to this and it's here, then it's in. So what is it? Well, if you can imagine plucking this out and putting it here, this seems to go here, which means this is equivalent to this. If you don't really believe that, let's turn this over here and see what happens. You can see this one fits nicely over here, which means this one is not equivalent to this. 
what does all that mean? Well, follow me with this. This one is equivalent to this, which means this is supposed to be here. And it's not, it's over here, which means it's not where it's supposed to be. This one, as we've shown, is not equivalent to this because when I turn it here, it fits flush. So you can see this is supposed to be here. So because this is here, when it's supposed to be here, it's not where it's supposed to be. So this isn't where it's supposed to be. Neither are these two, so we have no parity. Now that's as opposed to this situation. Now let's contrast that with this situation over here. Um, I kind of got it back into a similar configuration. Now as you can see, currently this one is in where it's supposed to be. This one is in where it's supposed to be. Which means that these two might be in or might not be in. Now, now let's see. If this one were in where it's supposed to be, then it's going to not be equivalent to this. Is that the case? Well, if I were to pluck this out and move it in here, you can see that it is equivalent. Because this is equivalent, this cannot be below here, which means this is not where it needs to be. Which means this is not where it needs to be. If you want to prove that, let's double turn this over here and you can see this is here. This belongs here, just underneath. You can see it fits flush. You can also tell that this is equivalent to this, because if I just reorient this and move this here, you know, pluck this out and put it here, it fits flush. And you're not supposed to have the same piece. So in this situation, I know that there's parity. And I know that there's parity because this is good, this is good, and these are not where they need to be. When you come across a situation like that, rather than go ahead with a solution, you're going to have to switch the two because you falsely equivocated one for another. You put something that was supposed to be down here, up here. And it's not your fault. You had no way of doing it, no way of knowing it. So what I'm going to do, if you get the situation, Look at the one just below it, or the one that's equivalent to it, which you can tell just by how it's shaped, and just move it in. So just <laughs> move this one up here. So turn, 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 turn. I'm going to keep rolling it until this one fits flush. Turn, 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 turn. And I'm keep doing this until this one fits flush. And there it is. Okay, now once you've done that, you did sort of a partial scramble. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have to get this corner back here. I'll get this edge back, turn it here. So turn, 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 turn. Um, another rule of thumb or something that you can follow is the edge that you turn back, don't make it this one because you might accidentally put it in the wrong way. And now I have to get these back as well. All right, so it's just a matter of getting it back. Here's our L, F, R, U, R, I, U, I, F, I, there's our line, F, R, U, 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 R, I, U, I, F, I. See what it takes to mend a broken heart? Um, once again, we can kind of practice the, uh, our placement of the edges here. None of these fit, so I would just randomly go R, U, R, I, U, R, to U, R, I. Any of these that seem to fit? Ah, uh, no, not yet. R, U, R, I, U, R, two, U, R, I. Uh, I like this, I like where this is, um, which means that if I like this, but I don't like this, that means this doesn't belong here because this would belong here, it belongs here. So I'm gonna hold it here then and make wait, wait for all of these guys to rotate. R, U, R, I, U, R, to you, all right. Didn't quite have this with a star. Uh, so how are we liking this? Yeah, this looks pretty good. This looks like it's fit in pretty well. You can see the sloping of the center over there. So now we can take almost by faith that these are correct. This is correct. This is not correct, not correct. And I'm gonna take by faith that, well, I don't have to take by faith. I know this is not correct because it's equivalent. See, this can come over to here. So I'm gonna hold it over here and do my edge, my corner rotating algorithm. U, R, U, I, L, I, U, R, I, U, I, L. And I do that until everything is in. This is in. Now, in terms of these guys, I'm just gonna do this until I know this is in over here because automatically these two will be where they're supposed to be. If the short end is just below this short corner. So, do it again. Boom. You take any keystone that you can, turn and turn. Okay, 
This is obviously where it needs to be. This is obviously where it needs to be. So is this, so we're good. Now we just do our rotational algorithm here. Turn, turn, turn. Boy, does this thing like to... Now keep track that this is what you're using, not this one. Don't get tripped up by that. Turn, 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 turn. It's not this one, remember, it's this one. Keep track, you don't have the color to help you. So you can get messed up by that. Maybe I just got messed up by describing it. But anyway, now we're gonna move this one in, so we'll see if I got messed up. And you have mended your broken heart. So, this concludes the two shapes of our Lucky Charms tutorials. This one is definitely a worthy addition to the mods of the 3x3s, if that's what you're into. And it is different from this. It has its own little issues because of the specific rotations that happen with this. So, hope that's helpful. Uh, very well turning, enjoyable puzzles. And on to the next batch. Thanks for watching.